So, um, so institutions and managed services are kind of interchangeable. Okay? And so things like airlines, the military, schools, all of these places are, I think, are sometimes where people don't necessarily think about when you're thinking about culinary, when you're thinking about being a chef, um, hospitals, healthcare. You also have corporate businesses. So corporate businesses like Valero, for example, their corporate headquarters, they have event space, they have, they have a cafeteria um, for their employees to go and eat um, lunch. And so um, all of these things like USAA is, has a massive food operation. So these are places that you can think about that are not necessarily a restaurant, standalone restaurant or in a hotel, but still have effective. I actually, when I graduated high school, I was gonna go into the military. Um, I took the test and they told me I could do anything I wanted except work in an auto body shop. And I was like, I could have told you that without a test. <laughs> um, so my thought process was culinary or military intelligence were the two. I know it's kind of two very far ends of the spectrum. Um, ultimately, none of that ever happened. Um, but, uh, but the military has a huge food service operation. Um, so let's talk about each one of these just a little bit in uh, a little bit of detail. Okay. Um, the different elements we have of these, and they all kind of take little bits and pieces of them. Um, leisure and recreation, conference centers, um, airports, travel plazas. What is a travel plaza? What is a travel plaza? How many of you have ever traveled internationally? You've been on the road and you stop and there's a whole bunch of restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little travel center okay. that has all these restaurants inside of it. Even if you travel, like I think, I think like in the New England area on the Mass Turnpike up in Massachusetts, they have travel centers. So they don't have restaurants along the, the toll roads. They have one exit where you get your gas and they have about five different restaurants, Starbucks, Popeyes, Wendy's, Burger King, maybe a Chinese place, right? And you can stop. So that's all part of that managed service. You're managing that entire travel center. Yes, sir. Uh, when did that like, like evolve? Well, think about it more of, I mean, it's, it's a specific purpose. So think about like when we have rest stops along the roads here in Texas, right? Mm -hmm. We have a rest stop where we obviously have our restrooms, but then add in an entire center where there's food, there's a gas station, all those different things, all those different services right there all in one. Yeah. They don't have um, at Yellowstone, which is just like driving for hours and hours and hours and then like, okay, there's this one place where you can use the restroom and get gas and buy food. Exactly, yep, absolutely. And so national parks, state parks, those are all part of those managed, uh, managed services. Okay. Um, one of the challenges with managed services is that, and institutions, is that we, as, as a manager, you have to, of course, meet the needs of the guests, right? They want to be fed. They need to be, be housed. They need to be, they, they, they have some kind of need. But at the same time, we also need to look out for the business. So for a hospital, you know, our patients need food. Do they not? Yeah. Okay. Our patients need food, but with hospitals, what's one of the other challenges? Also, you're such a delicate crowd, like you don't want to make them more sick. Highly susceptible population right now. Okay. So sorry, I realized this was in the way. Yeah, so dietary restrictions, yeah. they are susceptible, they're susceptible, they're already sick and or potentially sick. And so um, we want to make sure that we're practicing those good sanitation practices so that we don't make somebody more sick or sick in a different way. Um, they have dietary restrictions. They either need to be on solid foods or they cannot be on solid foods. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be on low sugar. They need, they have all these different dietary restrictions. So in a hospital setting, an institution like that, you 
need to look out for the patients, but you also need to keep your costs under control. You also need to look out for the hospital because you need to make sure that you are um, not wasting any product, that you're not wasting any money in the preparation of that, okay? The other thing about the managed services is that people are there. People cannot just get out of their hospital bed and go across the street and get Whataburger if they want, right. okay? Um, people cannot, if you're traveling on a turn on a toll road and you stop at a travel center, I can't say, you know what, I really wish I had Whataburger. I really want Whataburger right now, but there's only thing that's available is Burger King. If I want a hamburger, I've got to eat Burger King. So you have a very captive audience. Think about when, I know we don't have dorms here on campus, but if you've ever been in a dorm situation that has like a meal plan, you're on campus. And so if you don't have a vehicle to go off campus, then you're a captive audience. You That's your only choice to go to the dining hall to get food um, if you're at a university type uh, situation, okay? Um, the volume of our business is typically kind of cons consistent. So if we're, let's say we're in a university setting and we're in a dining hall, we know how many people who have purchased their, their meal plans. We kind of have an idea of how many people we're gonna serve each day. Same thing with the hospitals, okay? We have a certain number of rooms. We can, we kind of know, you know, what is the max capacity that we're gonna be serving food? Um, and so with a little bit more consistent, you can plan for it um, in that regard. All right, airlines. How many of y'all have already eaten airline food? Like actual food, not just the peanuts that they give you in the bag, okay? What's been your experience with the airline food? Usually with like sandwiches. Okay. Um, we had boar's head. Okay. It was pretty good, like sandwiches, chips, or something like that. Good, sandwiches and chips? But it was really fun because it was like seven. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, excellent. Pasta or chicken. And that's kind of cool, right? When you're sitting there and you're eating this meal on the airplane. I mean, that's a pretty cool experience. What else? Anybody? <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're in the economy class. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, my friend went to New Zealand. There's a 17 hour flight, and she's like, I got sick on the flight because the food wasn't properly cooked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, yeah, so there's that other issue. Anybody else? Angel. It was quite interesting, actually. It was pretty decent food, and they gave us ice cream afterwards, too. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. Very cool. Bless you. A grilled cheese sandwich? Uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, okay. Randall. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on longer flights here in the U.S. when I used to Mm hmm Absolutely. Anybody else experience with food on the plane? Yeah, I remember when I went, um, I think 2000 and gosh, 15, I think, because I went to go visit my friend in Scotland. And as soon as we took off from Boston, they were giving out dinner service. And then before we left, um, or before we landed in London, um, they were sending there, we had breakfast, so we had dinner and then breakfast. And then right before we landed, um, they gave us sandwiches and little cookies and things like that for like kind of a lunch. And so, um, yeah. And then I had recently, I went to Montreal last or back in September and I had to upgrade to get there because they canceled my flight through Houston. Um, and so I had to upgrade to business class, um, which was real rough. And, uh, but I, they had butter chicken, so I mean it was crazy. I sit down and they give, they present you this menu, and you can choose between your entree. Um, and so I had butter chicken, 
which I didn't even really, I didn't even think about it being an Indian dish, yeah. but it was. Um, and then as soon as I was eating it, I was like, why is this called butter chicken? And then I remember watching Beat Bobby Flay, and the person did the butter chicken, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I know butter chicken. Um, I don't know why I thought I was going to get chicken with butter on it. I don't know. Um, but uh, but the food was actually pretty decent. I was I was really impressed with it. Um and so it kind of it kind of just depends also too on the airline that you fly. And so um, oftentimes that will be something that you experience, and then that will help you make that decision. Think about same thing with hotels. You know the amenities that they offer in a hotel could decide whether or not you're going to stay at that place or another place. And same thing with the airlines. The amenities that they offer um, will encourage you to choose one or the other. Uh, so let's um, let's pause for a moment. I'm gonna we're gonna watch this video. All right. So the other institution we're talking about is the military. Okay. Military is um, they have the the different officers clubs. Okay. What other institution dining institutions do they have in the military? Uh, they have the MRE. Okay, so MREs, which stands for no, Meals Ready, ready to, eat. to Eat. How many of you have never had the pleasure <laughs> of enjoying an MRE? Okay, I should have brought some. I, I'll see. Um, where can I get them? Like the like the the them? Army Surplus Store, right? Yeah. I think um, they're kind of expensive. Well, if you get if you have a friend who has an ID card, you can get you can on get brand one base. Go yeah. to the commissary. Go to the commissary. Have, like a whole section. Yeah. Okay. My parent, my dad's retired Air Force. I'll uh, see if he can. Okay. So I'll just drive to Houston. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. But I mean, I just remember like the, the MREs. Um, it, so who has enjoyed? Well, sorry. Who has experienced an MRE? I don't know if enjoy is the right word. It's actually they're not. not they're, they're not. not they are not. They have gotten. They have definitely gotten better, right? Yeah. So now with the MREs, Angel, how does an MRE work? Uh huh. So, based off of what you get, the meal itself, like the protein, pasta, is going to be in a little uh, granite steel container. Okay. And we also have this uh, a chemical agent sort of thing. Yep. So put water in it and fill it up. Yeah, and it warms it up. Mm -hmm. Since we can only do it outside, so it steams up and everything, and that's how you warm it. Do it also has uh, side items, say PB and uh, it will be bread and then a pack of peanut butter. Or crackers. Okay. And then it also gives us a little sweet. So, like, you can get in and then skills. They want those things to be very good, but they took those ones out because when they're in the field, they melt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So there, yeah. So that that has that chemical agent that heats, so you don't necessarily have to boil water. I remember, like, when I my experience with MREs. When I was real little, my dad, it was really fun. Maybe kind of like Malia and eating chicken and, and pasta on the plane. It was fun to have an MRE when I was a kid. I'm like, this is so cool. I could not imagine having to eat that um, on a regular basis. But, um, but yeah, so um, in the field, they have those MREs. And so how do you get that nutritional value? Okay, because especially if you're out in the field, people need that nutrition um, uh, to sustain themselves. Okay, so how do you get that nutritional value, but at the same time also feed that captive audience? They can't just go somewhere else and get something else to eat. That is what their option is. And so we want to make sure that that we are doing a service to the to our clients. In that case, it would be the soldiers in the field. Okay, um, military hospitals as well, and then just dining halls, mess halls, or chow halls, or however you refer to it. Um, so. Um, Oftentimes in the military, what's the difference between a dining hall and a club? Clubs are a little bit more fancy. Okay, so the clubs is for more of like the higher ranking um, individuals, right? And it's more formal and stuff too. I mean, you can go, but it's more formal and that's where they have like the different parties and all that stuff. Yeah. 
So oftentimes, that's where you're going to have the parties and the private events and things like that. So you can actually um, rent the club as a private event. I've had friends that parents were in the military, and they would have their wedding receptions at the NCO club. Um, and so on that side, that's different than what we would be serving in a dining hall, kind of like a cafeteria style, right? And so there's all different levels um, of, of food service in the military. Elementary, secondary schools. Okay, so secondary is like high school. Um, and so we essentially have to, one of the challenges you have to work with at the elementary school and the, that, those types of institutions is the regulations. Those meals that are being served should be a balanced meal. Okay. I think the biggest joke I think when I was in school was that ketchup was considered a vegetable. So if we had burgers and french fries, they gave us two ketchup packets, then that was the equivalent to a vegetable, right? And so monitoring that and, and upholding those, those standards, um, Chef Costello, he had a great um, time. We, we, had, we, worked, we partnered with Region 20, um, and we brought in some cafeteria cooks. Um, to St. Phillips, and we did kind of an in-service training for them. And, um, and so kind of like a mini basic skills class, if you will. And so they were teaching them some knife skills and things like that. And he gave each person a uh, head of broccoli. And the one, the one cook, she chopped off the stem and just threw it in the trash. And she was like, oh, the kids only eat the crown. They only eat the, the green part of the, the broccoli. And so they were just throwing away the stalks. And so he saw that, and it wasn't on the lesson, but he took that as an opportunity to say, wait, wait, hold on. What can we do with this stock? So what, did, what do you think he taught them how to do? Broccoli cheese soup. Broccoli cheese soup. Mm -hmm. So we're using this broccoli. And those, those elementary school uh, cooks were just, their minds were blown because they were trained just to chop off and so throw away that, that stock because the kids didn't eat the stock. They just like the florets, right? Mm -hmm. And so going back to that, we have to do a service to our clients, but we also have to do a service to the business that we're, that we're running, you know, using that fresh broccoli and using those stocks to make broccoli cheese soup, which kids will eat, mm -hmm. um, especially if you put enough cheese in it, um, you know, they'll eat that and we're not throwing that product away. We're using all of it. So our yield is a lot higher yield um, and we get more use out of that product. And so now we're doing a service to the students because maybe they never had broccoli cheese soup as part of their school lunch before, but now we do uh, because that now that now that those people are trained to, um, to do that. So, Elementary school is based on a lot of uh, same thing with hospitals is a lot of times is the dietary the the makeup of that meal to make sure that it's a balanced meal, um, especially at the um, elementary and secondary school levels. Sometimes that's the only meal the kids are going to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's the only time they're going to eat breakfast. Only time they're going to eat lunch, um, and that might be their last meal before they go and have breakfast the next day at school. And so it's really important that we're doing a service for them, that we're making sure that those meals are balanced. Okay, that national school lunch program. Um, so that is, you know, that's, that funding is what goes to provide those, uh, those meals. And so that's why it's important that they're following those guidelines, they're following those nutritional values um, for that. I've seen, how many of y'all, I know, I know school lunch has probably changed a lot since I'm coming up on my 20 year anniversary, 20 year high school yeah, reunion, um, class of 2000, we were so cool, we were the first like four digit year, yeah, uh, yeah we were, we, we set the standard. Uh, <laughs> 2002. <laughs> But, um, so anyways, but I know school lunches back then, of course, we had the school cafeteria line that you would go through, um, which was what I always had to do because my parents gave me my lunch money that way. Um, 
And I was always so jealous that people got to go to the salad bar and the snack bar and, and whatnot. But I would save my pennies so I can go eat at the snack bar. Um, but I digress anyways. But now, like, like, what's school lunch program like now? I mean, there's restaurants. It's all frozen food that's just, like, produced? At my school, it was just all frozen. All frozen food? Okay. Well, I was at Northside. That's where I, I taught last. And um, the food was very tasteless. And then, yeah. see, like, uh, the Michelle Obama changes that happened, the food changed. Like, it was, like, less tasty. Like, because the sodium re was reduced. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. then, like, your veggies really didn't taste like anything. <laughs> and so, okay. And even, like, uh... A pop tart, right? Like yummy pop tart. Um, you would buy a pop tart, and it tasted different because you had to use like different, like you had to use like whole grain. I guess it was better, but okay. But it really took all the flavor out. I don't know why it had to be that ugly, but like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was a struggle. Anybody else? I yes. My last year of my like on my senior year in high school. They brought in this whole program, like a build your own like burger and all that stuff. Uh huh. So that's what they brought in, and it was, people really liked it because they'll serve like the normal like every like day meal, and then you can have like either your the like a taco thing, or you build your own taco bowl, or like you build your own burger, or like any other little thing. And um, they even had like little vegetarian options too. Okay, it was awesome. Like, it was really different. Yeah. Um, I see what I mean? Highlands? Uh, Highlands High School? Okay. Um, so in Hondo, most of our food is like handmade by our cafeteria ladies. None of it was frozen. Um, but during the last couple of years of high school, they started making those changes. Like they tried to put in a salad bar. That got taken away because no one could clean up after themselves. Mm. Um, they tried to give us like a soda machine that didn't work either and so they started moving to frozen foods and mm -hmm. it was just really really bad yeah and but at that point um it was sophomores and up because the campus to go yeah. have lunch so a majority of these two bodies just didn't go to the cafeteria yeah okay I think it's anybody else yeah. josie oh, when my son was really young, we used to have lunch with him. Okay. A lot of that was thrown out. The kids just would not eat. And then just the other day, a uh, custodian started a conversation with me and talking about the kids that are busting from high school and how much food they throw out. So it seems like there's still a lot of food that is just going to waste because. It doesn't appeal mm -hmm. to those taste buds. Yeah, absolutely. How do you collect them? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I run hotels. No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 That's not my. That is outside my purview. Um, but then that that's a very good. That is a very good question. Um, of of how do you. You want to do a service to our, our clients. You know, we have a captive audience. Um, and so we want to do a service to them, but we also need to make sure that we are doing a service to the institution as well. For my school, on Fridays twice a month, we do Chick-fil-A Fridays. So like the PTO would go to Chick-fil-A and just buy a bunch of that. And then you can purchase like a sandwich or a sandwich of chips and water um, every once in a while. Okay. So that was a nice change. Yeah. Awesome. Um, my school was very strict, so we weren't allowed to go off campus at all. So we Shots like, and ISDs nice like that. Yep, so we would like sneak out to go get tacos and stuff like that. But also it was very limited. So like since I was gluten free, I could never actually like eat breakfast at school because it's always some kind of like bread right. thing. And then, yeah, that's right, we do waste food because they wouldn't allow us to leave the line unless we had um, a drink, a fruit, a vegetable and the main thing and sometimes you just don't want to grab that rotting orange so you grab it put it on the tray to appeal them and then you just toss it in the trash right after you leave the line so we yeah would waste food a lot too. and so a lot of times too that's that's part of that regulations that you know as that 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 lunch program you've got to serve your your you know your protein your starch your vegetable you have to have that balanced meal but then if people aren't going to eat it and they just toss it 
then what's the point? Um, yes, ma'am. My school had that problem too. So we made a share table. So we'd have like, if you didn't want your fruit or juice, like anything you didn't want, we'll put it in the table and anyone can take it. Yeah. So that's what we did. That helped a lot. So it's like, we didn't really waste food. So if you didn't really want your tray of food, you'll just leave it there. The tray there. Huh. Yeah. And then other kids could like, keep off of that. Yeah. yeah. And then that people, people would, like, that didn't get to eat, like you said, yeah. after school or something, or even they save it for like a afternoon snack for the kids in class. Right. So that they can eat again before they yeah, that's interesting. Okay, cool. I like that. Dean? Um, in intermediate school and like in elementary school, they're actually remanded for not eating all of our food. Oh, really? And end up having to miss a class because they're like, you're not leaving in case you eat it all. And we're like, it's not good. You're really going to make us eat it? Yeah. Um, interesting. And I had to miss two of my classes once because I just wouldn't eat the broccoli. Yeah. Like, horrendous. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean that. That. I mean. Okay. I know that I'm like generally thought of as a pretty good student, but there's sometimes where I probably would have used that to my advantage. I would have been like, I'm not. I'm not hungry. I'm not gonna eat. I probably would have done that. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, reflected on our grades, and so they eventually had to fight. You gotta stop that. Okay, yeah. Patricia. I think it also has to do with the balance. Mm -hmm. Students that are elite, they have to be able to balance their grades. Yeah. Because if you don't have balance, you can't balance your grades. Yeah. Because if you don't have balance, you can't balance it could help change those habits. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it can definitely help develop those habits, especially if, you know, um, how easy it is and how accessible fast food is. Um, you know, you can go to McDonald's and get a burger for 99 cents. Is it a good burger? No. I mean, I was going to say maybe, but it depends. depends on the time of the month. <laughs> Sometimes, like on the 13th, 14th, that might be a really good burger. Uh, but uh, but no, I mean, I Fred's, Fred's Fish Fry is another example. I, I can't remember if I told you all this or not, but and this is my, 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 my cost control class. I went to Fred's Fish Fry because I had heard about it like during Fiesta. They had a really cool Fiesta medal. So I went there, and I was like, what's this all about? And they had a 99-cent chicken sandwich. And I'm like, how do you have an internet said chicken sandwich? And so I'd already ordered my food, so I didn't really think about it. But then the next time I went back, what is this 99 cent chicken sandwich? <laughs> um, yeah, it was like the chicken sandwich, the frozen chicken patty that you get at Where? school. Yeah. yeah, I think it was, this one was, this one was round, so at oh, least wow. it was the shape of the bun. <laughs> um, but 99 cents, I was like, dude, 99 cents? I could eat like three of those and be, be full. I'm not necessarily eating healthy, but um, that three bucks, you know, gets me through. And so sometimes the, the school lunch program, like Patricia said, might help change those, can institute some good healthy habits. It's not seasoning to it. Big French fish fries with fries. Oh, I'm, 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 I am almost 100% sure, but I don't want to say that. Actually, I'm sh recording. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. Maybe I won't post this video on YouTube. <laughs> All right. So, um, so preparation for the elementary school, secondary schools. Like we know, you know, we have early college high school students here on campus. And part of that program is they bring the lunch here. So think about that transportation of that food. It's made somewhere, and then it has to be kept hot or kept cold during that transportation process. So that's a whole other aspect um, that's being added to that, that preparation. Colleges and universities, of course, we have so many different places. I mean, we have cafeteria downstairs. If we were on a university campus, we would have food halls. We would have dining halls. We would have sporting arenas that would have concessions. So we have all these different parts of food and beverage that happen around campus. Um, here at Artemisia's, I mean, here in our department, we have Artemisia's. So we have a student-run restaurant. Same thing with like UNT, Texas Tech, um, University of Houston. 
right? Those universities have similar programs to ours, and so they also have restaurants in them. And so all those things are run and operated as part of the institution, okay? Here's our wonderful balanced meal. Yeah. What are you talking about? That is like, that is classic fruit cocktail right there. I was so happy. I was so happy when I got that one little cherry in there. Oh my gosh. Like that just made my, it was going to be an awesome day. I don't care what grade I was going to get on my test afterwards. I got a cherry in my fruit, co a fruit cocktail. I was set. There's nothing wrong with that. We've got shrimp and pasta and some stir fried veggies. Hey, you get two, two rolls and a pecan pie. Probably, I'm guessing that's probably sweet tea. Um, I would assume because if there's pecan pie, it's probably in the south. So I'm gonna say that's sweet tea, which probably is not. What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, you can uncover your eyes now. The. <laughs> what time do we have? We got five minutes, okay, or 10 minutes, 10 minutes. All right, so um, typically colleges, universities, their dining meals are on like a two, a, a, a kind of rotation plan, right? We always knew in, in elementary school, Fridays was Hamburger Friday, right? Mexican was always on Wednesday. Wednesdays. Yeah, Mexican was always Wednesday. Pizza was always on Thursdays, right? So we're on a cycle. I did the same thing when I'm up in Maine. I'm working for a summer camp, right? That's basically institution feeding. The kids cannot go anywhere else to eat. And so um, I love it when parents would come to me after two weeks, like, how did you get my kid to eat? This was their option. <laughs> I wasn't going to say, do you want chicken nuggets? Do you want pizza? I'm not a short order cook, right? I got to cook for 60 people. And so this is what we're serving. And eventually they're gonna get hungry enough that they're gonna eat what I want, that I'm gonna be, what I'm gonna be preparing. Um, you know, or they'll sit there and they'll see their friends eating it and I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try this, right? Um, so peer pressure can be good. Uh, <laughs> um, so it also helps with budgeting and forecasting with the college and the university because we know, we can look and see, we know how many meal plans students have purchased. We know what our budget is for this upcoming period of time, okay? We know that if it's spring break, we don't, we can forecast, we don't have to prepare as much food because people may not be on campus, okay? We can also use that concept of budgeting and forecasting of looking back previously. Well, maybe we are a, a, a campus where people stay for spring break and they don't go off. Um, campus and so we do need to make sure that we're busy so we look at that forecasting what is what happened in the past to help us prepare for the future okay um, all right so we have to manage our money okay we have to manage make sure our budget what we're spending on food is less than the money that we're bringing in, whether we're actually charging our clients for it or whether we're getting subsidized, um, we're getting um, funding from some other source to pay for those ingredients, we need to, we need to budget and, and balance those. Um, as a manager, you have to, a lot of these things are the same things that you're gonna see in a lot of different situations. Of course, our employee relations. We need to make sure that our employees are working well. We have a good working relationship with our employees as a manager, but also our employees together. Um, definitely financial and budgeting. Oftentimes in institutions type settings, you're actually, you're, you're on a very tight budget. And so you have to make do with what you've got, um, but still stay within the parameters that you need, whether it's dietary restrictions, whether it is, um, the quantity of food, we don't want to be throwing a lot of food away and things like that. Um, of course, sanitation in foodborne illnesses is high on any time that you're working in a food service operation. Um, and then that purchasing. How many of you have ever purchased food before from like a provider, like a, like a Benny Keith or Cisco or Performance Food Groups? Okay. Are you mean like, does Webster.com count? I don't know what Webster.com is. It's, it's, I mean... Yeah, it's you buy a like restaurant food or it's like in bulk. Okay. And then you get it delivered to your house or wherever. Okay. Does that count? 
Um, I'm thinking more of like the institution side of that, that's actually preparing the food. So the restaurant would be purchasing all the raw product to then turn into what you're going to sell. Um, so like Cisco, Benny Keith, Performance Food Group, um, you have like different providers. Um, you have like local farmers. There's all these different types of vendors you can use. Jack, sorry, Hardee's. Okay, what do they provide? Just everything in general or? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Angel? Yeah, so you've done it. Where, where, how did, what was your experience like? Uh, so when we get Cisco, we get like all our stuff from them, the, the gloves and all that stuff. So when the guy was loading it up, I worked at uh, Emory's under Mr. Luna. And uh, so when they bring it in, they put the, the cold stuff in our areas, the frozen food in there, and then they give us the inventory list. And we go through and see how many boxes about this, so first check the, we don't really get produce from them, we get produce from another guy. Okay. But uh, we check like make sure everything is how they say, and how the boxes are damaged, and then we sign off, and we give them their coffee, and we give our coffee to our uh, kitchen manager. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's on the receiving side of it. We've already ordered the food. Now it's coming. We want to check to make sure that the product is in good condition. We want to make sure that the product um, is usable, um, that the, the packaging's not damaged. All these different things we want to take into consideration. Um, if you've never, how many of you have ever done inventory? Any kind of inventory, whether it's food, retail, whatever, inventory of some sort. You've gone into a storage area and you've counted the product that you have. You use that, and then you use that to make your order, yeah. okay? Purchasing is something that is really important that you don't over-order, or that you order enough that you don't under-order, okay? Um, healthcare facilities, we are also, not only are we taking care of the people who are in the hospital, but we're also taking care, we have a cafeteria where maybe visitors and employees are also going to eat, okay? And so, um, Lots of different situations we have there. Um, let's see. In addition to the food service side, we can also boost revenue um, and manage the overall revenue of the hospital by having gift shops. We can have um, you know, coffee shops. We can do a lot of different things um, there to kind of help boost that revenue, um, that overall revenue. Adding quick service, okay? So again, these are things that people recognize. Um, and, and sometimes um, if people are picky eaters, they're gonna, they're gonna go with what's familiar to them rather than going through a cafeteria line. Or if they've had, they've been scarred for life because of their cafeteria food experience. Um, they may not want to do that at the, at the, the hospital cafeteria. Now, if you're in a bed, you usually don't have a choice. Like, that's what you get. Um, and so, of course, why do you think that the addition of comfort foods is kind of a, a trend in the healthcare facilities? Well, for comfort, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, somebody is not feeling well. So let's put some comfort food in there and kind of help them boost their spirits a little bit. Right? Um, business and industry. Um, so contractors like... Um, one of the biggest food uh, contractors is Sodexo. So they manage the, the food operations in different corporate, um, corporate offices. Um, leisure and recreation. Under that, we have places like sporting arenas, uh, concert halls, places like that. So again, we have food and beverage outlets, and we manage all of that. Um, in those in those different areas one of the great things about stadiums and concert halls is that you have a captive audience they can't just get up and leave and go somewhere else okay so you have that cap of captive audience but at the same time you want to serve what people are liking what they enjoy so that you can increase your revenues okay aramark is another one sodexo sodexo and aramark are another um corporate providers um Let's see, last slide. Uh, different trends in the industry. 
um, in hospitals, sometimes people are wanting more of that 24 hour, 24 hour seven service, not just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, because it's not always on that, that dining schedule. Um, food to go. People want that food to go. So, and also like think about in the uh, university setting, you can grab that food to go and take it back to your dorm room. You don't have to sit in the in the cafeteria to eat it. Okay. Um, and then healthcare and nursing homes. Okay. As our baby boomers are aging, okay, our our healthcare and our uh, nursing home areas, our assisted living and whatnot, that is a segment that's growing. We have a couple of assisted living people that I've met with, like managers that want you all as students to come and do your practicums at those locations. Um, and so again, providing those good quality meal, people are paying a lot of money for those, those managed services, like an assisted living home. Um, and so there was somebody I was talking to recently, I think, this is, I think I'm out of time. Yep, I'm out of time, but this is the last story. Um, I was talking to someone recently and they, their, their father was very hesitant to go into assisted living. And now they can't get him out. He's like, the food is amazing. He's like, I feel like I'm like in this resort pampered area and I get amazing food every day and blah, 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 blah. And he was like, now I never want to leave. And so just like school lunch has that kind of has that negative stigma. Um, we also think of nursing homes as having that negative stigma. So why can't you change that and make your make your your nursing home or your assisted living a different place? If you're that manager of that man that that institution, change it, change the dynamics, and then people will want to come to you, and you might change the model of that assisted living. All right, All right thank y'all so much. So next.